Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on InRange TV. As you know, we've been doing a lot with these What Would Stoner Do rifles, and the, one of the basic premises of this build is to use a pencil barrel. Correct. That's how, that's the single biggest thing you can do to reduce weight, is reduce barrel profile. And it's where the AR-15 started. Exactly. Now, the reason that that hasn't been typically done is that lightweight barrels tended to have a lot of built-in stresses. They would get hot quickly, and when they got hot, they would warp, and your point of impact would change. You'd lose zero. Now, with Faxon, they are doing, they have a proprietary modern set of stress relief protocols that they go through, and Faxon's argument is that their pencil barrel does not shift uh, under heat. So, we're gonna put that to the test today. Carl and I are each going to put five rounds onto a paper target uh, with each of our respective rifles. We are then going to dump 30 rounds into the dirt, and then we're going to put another five rounds on the target. Now we expect our second group will be a bit larger than the first group, but it should be in the same base, in the same position. The center of the two groups should be the same. The zero should not shift is what we're talking about. Exactly. So this is not a group size test. Right. We're shooting relatively craptastic ammo at 100 yards to prove one thing, not group size, but to prove that under a bar a pencil barrel under heat does not flex and shift zero after dumping a mag. A properly stress relief pencil barrel. Correct. So, right. so you've got an 18 inch barrel, I've got a 14.5 inch with permanently affixed flash hider. In theory, if we were to shift at all, yours would shift more than mine because you sure. have a longer barrel. Yep, exactly. Let's find out what happens. We're gonna start with Ian shooting his five, then I'm gonna shoot five, then he's gonna dump 30, then shoot five, then I'm gonna dump 30 and shoot five. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Five down. All right, my turn. All right, I got my five. Let's go down range and draw a circle around them. All right, we'll start with my scores here. Uh, pretty good there. I got two shots on that guy. Three, four, five. So we'll circle these and then we'll dump some ammo and come back. Yeah, and put an X at the center of the group. Yeah. I'm gonna say that's right about there. Yep. So when we go shoot, dump the dump the 30 round mag and then shoot another five round group, we would expect the five round group to be somewhere in the vicinity of this area, proving that the barrel did not deflect under heat. So Carl's group, a little more open with a red dot, although with a magnifier. And his is better zero than mine. So we will expect Carl's group to be centered right about there. All right, so now we're each gonna dump 30 rounds and then fire five more on the same paper target. The 30 rounds are not gonna be on the target. 30 rounds are just going into the desert. The only purpose is to heat the barrels up. All right, time to dump some ammo. 30 round mag dump into the dirt and then another five round group. going to shoot a five round group back on the same paper he shot the first five round group with the ambient temperature barrel. That's five. All right. All right, so I'm practicing for the Dirt Shooter Nationals. I'm gonna dump the 30 round mag into the dirt, then we're gonna do five for group on paper. No chance of this getting cooled off out here. It's like 100 degrees out here today. Literally. Here we go. All right. That's 30. And five for score. Threw one a little high, a lot of mirage coming off the gas tube because we generated a lot of heat. Let's go see what happened downrange. I'm really excited to check this out. All right, the first thing I want to point out is that I don't have a perfect zero. You'll notice these shots are not centered on the exact center of the target. 
And that's not important for this test. We're not testing zero. What we're testing is repeatability. Wherever the zero is, it wouldn't matter if all the shots were hitting over here. Our question is, do they hit in the same place when it's cold and when it's hot? So, and the reason for that is we've done a lot of switching of optics. Yeah, we've been messing with a bunch of stuff. Right, so anyway, with this one, I actually, we had to look closely, but I actually have one shot right there. You can see it took out part of the previous circle. And then two, three, four, and five. So center of this group is now approximately, so I moved a total of a, an inch Here. and a half approximately, um, which is well within the margin of error of the group that I'm shooting. So what we would expect to see with a 50 year old pencil barrel, like something on an SP-1, is a more substantial change in point of impact Wait. shift. Yep. All right, so this is with the 14.5 inch gun. This is what we called center of group. However, uh, this was the one I called. I said I threw this. I said I threw one high. That was me. I said it on camera while we were shooting. This is the group I fired ultimately right here. So if we take the group after the 30 round heat stress and throw out the flyer, which this was me. This is a Carl right here. I screwed up. That is now the group after a dump of a 30 round magazine. Maybe it deflected slightly high. I don't think it really did. I think we just got some better shot grouping here. The reality is we're within the margin of error and the group actually got tighter with the exception of the one that I called as a flyer, which was me, than when I shot the group when the cold barrel was cold. So I would say the 14.5 inch barrel absolutely passed Faxon's statement that it was properly stress relieved and under heat after a full mag dump really did not shift zero. All right, so this is our second take on this because the first one unfortunately had a little bit of a technical glitch. Oops. We lost something. Uh, it happens. When we were out here the first day, we did both the What Would Stoner Do rifles, and we yep. did test the uh, Colt SP-1 AR-15, and we lost that bit. So yep. we're out here on day two trying to get that bit of the footage for you guys yep. because we think it's an important part of the conclusion. Yeah. So what we're dealing with here is the original pencil barrel, and we're going to see how much this heat deflects after the mag dump, just like we saw with the What Would Stoner Do guns. All right. Five rounds on the target, yep. heat it up with a dump of 30, and then five more rounds, and we'll see what the difference is. Recording. All right, so we got our first five round mag. We're gonna get a cold bore five round group. All right, that's five. Let's go check it out. Holy cow, your group sucks. You, you know just what? can't shoot. This was a very hard target to aim at with iron sights at 100. That dot was not visible, so I was kind of holding on the line. And as a result, I grouped a little high. But it's not the worst. Iron sights at 100 yards with an SP-1. It's about a two and a half inch group. So this is our original group from a cold bore. We're gonna go dump 30 rounds between the targets here. And then we're gonna shoot five for score on paper. And we're gonna see if we get a shift out of that. All right, so we got a 30 round mag here. We're gonna dump that left side of the target. This is not going on the target, it's between the targets. And then we're gonna to go to the five round group. Well, I'm sure we hit absolutely nothing with that because I can't even see anymore. What the smoke clear there. The gun is uh, smoking at this point. All right. The dust is cleared, we have a hot barrel. Let's shoot groups. All right, that's five. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look. Um, actually, thankfully to us, because we weren't sure if we would, <laughs> Doing this the second time, we got the exact same result, which does prove that this barrel shifts exactly the same way. Uh, the group is still high. So if my elevation is, I, sh I aimed at the same aiming point. So this is the elevation center. And the new group is here. And you'll notice that the group size really hasn't changed all that much. No, it's, a, if anything, it's maybe a tiny, well, yeah, no, it's a little small. bigger, but not enough to worry about. Yeah. This is about three inches versus two and a half for that maybe. However, it's moved about five inches to the right. But if we take center of group here by drawing an X and center of group here by drawing an X and then just do the four and a half, I wouldn't say five, four to four and a half inch shift to the right, which is exactly what happened the first time we tested the barrel with the same test, but we lost that footage, did it again and we got the exact same result. So that particular gun, the way they stress relieve the barrel, or I should say lack of stress relieving, causes it to flex right under heat. 
any other barrel it was, is not properly stress relief might flex up, left, right, down, doesn't matter. This one flexes right. So if you were using this gun in the field and you happen to know that, and you know that after a mag dump it flexes right, you might start favoring left. But that's certainly not something you want to be doing in a stressful situation. And if you didn't know, the, the effect is all of a sudden after 30 rounds, at 200 yards, you're almost a foot off the target. Oh yeah, so let's talk about that. With the facts on barrels, we did see, I think we saw a minor shift of about an inch. Let's say about an inch. Yep, okay. it was about that. With modern manufacturing capabilities, with a pencil barrel thinner than the one on the SP1, we saw an inch. So an inch at 100 yards is an inch. An inch at 200 yards is two inches. I mean, an MOA, one MOA right. shift. So one MOA at one is one, two is two, three is three. You're still effective out to 500 or more yards because you're looking at a five inch shift. The amount of shift we got at 100 yards with the SP1 is the amount you'd get with the facts on pencil barrel at 500 yards. Yeah. So that should really put things into perspective about how things have changed with modern manufacturing and quality control. As a, result, as a result, we wanted to bring this to you to demonstrate that we're really putting these barrels through the test and we want to find out and make sure that what we're saying to you is accurate and this is why we did this test. So I think it's pretty evident that the facts on pencil barrels and the modern manufacturing capabilities and the ability to stress relieve these barrels now versus then has changed the game and pencil barrels are again, once again, a, a viable option for your AR and the most important part of your weight reduction process in building a new modern at what would stoner do rifle. So guys, I hope you like this kind of fact finding exercise and I hope that you believe that this data is relevant to why we're saying what we're saying. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We are a wholly viewer supported project and all this ammo we just dumped today came as a result of Patreon support. So thank you for that. If you can't support us through Patreon, please just subscribe to the channel and share this kind of content with your friends because people don't believe it until they see it.